Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back all you amazing individuals in the Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and we've got our co-host h and Trader back in the house with us. We're going to do the last rips again, but just once a week as our schedules permit it. HH, what's up buddy? How you doing? What's up with it? Let's get it. Let's get into these markets, these amazing, beautiful, money-taking markets. Money-taking or money-making? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, oil having a nice pullback today after we've been seeing oil go ballistic. What's your thoughts on this? You think we're, you think we're you know, finding support at this trend line and going to keep this oil run? You think the oil run's over with? Biden's, well, think- Biden spoke and it's over with now. Well, I think there's going to be a little bit more of a scare and then a recovery. Um, I don't know how we're going to uh, produce oil at the same um, steady amount. I do know there is a lot of oil in the U.S., but, I mean, we're just going to have to ramp up oil production, which may increase uh, jobs. I don't know if more people want to work with petroleum, but I do know... uh, Petroleum engineers do make quite a bit of money. So, if you're interested, now I'm kidding. Uh, but it's it's gonna be uh it's gonna be crazy. I, I do think we're gonna see a little bit more of a dip and then a recovery to the 110. Well, we're already uh, back over 110 right now here in in uh, after hours. Yeah, I'm talking about over the next couple of days to weeks. You think, think the we recovery got a bit more to come down? A little bit more for the recovery? Mm, a little bit more to come down, and then we'll get a little bounce recovery. So you think we're going to crack it, crack this uptrend that we're on? Um, I think we can revisit that 105 one more time. Now, we did visit it today on that one I week. Is yeah, one more and time? I think you're going to need to visit it one more time, or at least above that. I, I'm not going to say 105 as a price point, but that area, like that general area. Okay. I I think it's 110 that's holding up. I think we're seeing it today. A lot of the oil stocks did have huge pullbacks. You know, people, like you said, got some money took in the day expecting oil to keep going up. But that's the thing. Oil is on a, on a multi-week run, multi-month run, really. And... As soon as we broke $100, we just hit a new level of volume and volatility on oil. So all that volatility, I'm I'm thinking this is just a short-term pullback, especially if the NQ and the SPY, if they fall tomorrow, if they can't hold up where they're at, which they're at major resistance lines. But the NQ still, even on the daily chart, it's got the 50 day above it, the 200 day above it, the downtrends above it. It closed today right here under the 10 day moving average. Whereas oil, you know, this is a pretty big pullback. We just hit 130. So, of course, we're going to have a pullback. This is a $20 pullback in a day. So, we can pull back $20 in a day. And part of that rebound where it dipped to 103 was a $5 rebound. If we're moving that if we're that volatile in oil, I think this is going to be a short, a short-lived pullback. That's that's what I'm thinking. Possibly, possibly. And the other reason why I said it is because a lot of the oil stocks held their trend lines today, or or right around it. They might have cracked just a little bit, but even MARPS uh, held around that $14 area. INDO holding around 33. Uh, so a lot of these oil stocks are still holding their gains, even though they pulled back today. Yesterday was a hot day. I mean, oil went ballistic, and we just saw, you know, massive rips Monday. Well, actually, Monday and Tuesday, massive rips. But what you got there on your portfolio? You got us some uh, watch list. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I was just making these watch lists, and I'll um, put these into the Discord as well. But these are like starter watch lists, playing around with Yahoo Finance. Uh, this is not a sponsored video, but hey, if they want to sponsor, let's go. Uh, I'm enjoying uh, their little their little uh, screeners and everything. 
Yeah, um, anyway, I may yeah. I may even be switching from Trading View to Yahoo Finance because Yahoo Finance's free version is seemingly better than the paid Trading View version. Not as far as charting wise, of course. Trading View's got the best charts, but I've been having a lot of issues lately with the Trading View. Uh, feeds like the timing of things being off and stuff like that and i think how you've had that same problem so that's why you went to yahoo finance yep yep amazing and and it's i mean it's just so easy to use i mean like right here i got my portfolio crude oil and everything in your portfolio it goes and it finds the the news on your portfolio so you don't have to go and search everything's just right here easy on i mean it's just ah it's beautiful yeah, there's just screeners and a bunch of different things like that. And you can set it up for earnings. I mean, the same way you can set up things with uh, Thinkorswim, you can do that with Yahoo Finance. But Yahoo Finance just seems to have way more news that comes out than Thinkorswim. So yep. but what do we got? What do we got? I see an NS on the top of that. Now, these are, what, what list are we looking at? Oil here? This is the crude crude oil and basically like anything dealing with oil or petroleum. Okay. Of course, we all know top of the cheap list, CEI. <laughs> Down there at 107. I traded this one uh, when it was at 136 to 170. I was expecting it to get some rips, but... Didn't expect a lot because you know those cheaper stocks, man. They'll make you regret it if you try to hold them. So <laughs> I just need money. Yeah, it is a little bit higher float, I believe, too. But it did not too long ago. Let's see, when was that? September last year. Oct uh, yeah, September last year went on a, a big run up to five dollars. So it does have the ability to run, but it's going to be based on whether oil continues to. Do its but move it's, it's, or it's one to keep on watch because anytime there is oil news or energy news, mm -hmm. it goes anytime. Yeah. So even even if there's no volume, but you see oil news, <laughs> CEI is one of those that you like. You know it's gonna go up. <laughs> yeah, it, it it gets a lot of attention. That's for sure. It's it's a cheap one, so a lot of retail traders' favorite little pick. The next one is SDPI superior drilling products and this one uh i chose because you know with all of this petroleum that we, we got to ramp up production so drilling companies and and companies that can get into the earth are probably going to start seeing a little bit more attention yeah yeah i believe gold and silver personally are probably next to start ripping up they've been testing Gold tested 2,000, silver tested 26, 27. But oil, you know, oil's been the main runner. Like you said, though, as they're getting into that ground and there's, there is shortages, it seems to be, on silver especially. But I think a lot of these sectors from where, where we were real comfortable with the economy, I think a lot of those sectors are underinvested in. They're not ready for this type of oil production output that we're going to have to make up for by not using Russian oil or any of these other oils. So it's not like there's a bunch of oil refineries just ready to go. You know, there's some, of course, but was it Shell 66 or something? Uh, one of the big, one of those as went out of business and then there's a, two other refineries that are having issues because they're underinvested in. Uh, same thing with some of the mining sector, but actually the, the gold and silver sector are showing some of their, their best revenues right now as those prices of gold and silver keep going up. So they're positioned really well, I think, to be the next runners. Yeah. The next one is one that you, you traded, uh, ENSV. Yeah, and I'm still in ENSV. For everybody, I'm still in MARPS. I actually added to MARPS today a little high, so I am down on ENSV uh, MARPS. I still have my HUSA and what was the other one? I think that's it. My uh, my HUSA shares as well, just a few of those. But like I said, I'm, I think we're not done with oil. I, I think we, we're probably just getting started. It's just not going to be as fast yeah uh, as a rip we just you know this is like the initial excitement and all of that but the market may have priced in this initial 
move, but I doubt the market's priced in all the uh, time that it's going to take for these oil refineries to go to get going. And exactly. I don't think we're going to see dollar gas prices here very soon. <laughs> yeah. The next one is Ring Energy. So Ring, uh, of course, it's been dipping, 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 came into this little shallow point. And of course, this is the uh this is the the monthly chart, the uh or my bad, yearly chart, monthly chart, weekly chart and daily chart. So we can kind of see it has come up and it, it has a little bit of a top up here that's been testing multiple times in this area of the three like 350 up to the 420 here and it's just been in this area just playing around but it's forming those higher lows the previous low was right here at 179 then it made a little bit higher low at uh two two dollars then made a little bit higher low at uh 250 and now a higher low at 275. So it seems like every 25 cents is just holding those those quarter dollar moves up. And so yeah, I saw that and I was like, man, this one being an energy stock could be one for the for the uh, near future. You know, nice and cheap the, one. The floats under 100 million. I believe so. Let me check. Yeah, it looked like it's, it's showing on Thicker Swim shares outstanding 99 million. So it's somewhere around there, but. Yeah, it does have back last year that little flat top on the daily that one one point that we're coming up to. So I think yeah, yeah we gotta we resistance. gotta break four, but then yeah, that four fifteen area that's gonna be the big area where ring can really get going. It is bullish above all EMAs, so that's definitely a possible play there. Most definitely. Let me check the actual stats to see what that float is looking like. It floated seventy four point eighty four million. I mean seventy one point eighty four million. Thirty percent um, held by your insiders. Twenty four percent held by institutions. Mm -hmm. And I want to point out too why you're saying that. That's important on these type of stocks that held by institutions and insiders. Normally, the low float stocks we day trade are garbage, and they're not held by insiders or institutions. Or if they are, it's a little bit of a little amount of shares so that's one of the differences with these oil stocks versus our regular uh, market condition trades where we're trading you know whatever the hot news is we got exactly. a whole sector that's been exploding so and, and this sector is a one of the biggest sectors one of the most money making sectors there is in the entire world you know that's part of the reason why I'm sure we are over there messing around in this war, and it seems to be about oil. It makes sense, even though the mainstream media has got all kinds of narratives. But this uh, this next one was one that I traded as well. It's nine n i n e. Yeah, you killed that one. I was we were <laughs> we I, were I on, the, on that boy. Yeah, we were on actual call when you were trading that, and that was wild. Like. Five minutes after H jumps in there, earnings drops and they smash earnings and it started ripping. <laughs> yeah, we were up to seven bucks in in like that, like two minutes after that. <laughs> yeah, man, three that to all, seven. That was all after hours yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. after hours yesterday. So it looks like it pulled back some to the about five dollar or oh, four dollar area. It, it closed green today though, so that's a strong close on that trend line. Yep. And that's what I was looking at. I got this pretty much the same exact trend line drawn there. This this little uptrend right here. We got this little uptrend going from about right here, right up this line. And I was like, okay, well, I'll give it room to to if it comes through this uptrend, I'll give it room to the top or the body of this previous candle right here to kind of play around which is 366 if yeah. it can start holding the body of this top of this candle though that could be a nice entry for a continuation and my profit target on this one because i don't know if it'll go all the way up but i may take 
um, the first take will probably be the body of this candle here at the 575 and then hold the other half for it, whatever else it wants to give. I mean, as long as that uptrend holds, and this is an energy stock too, so, I mean, just because just cause I had that pullback from yesterday, that was a big move. That's what I'm saying. All the moves in the stocks, the oil stocks yesterday were really big. So if any traders were in there and they were smart, they locked out profits, you know, try if they were day traders and scalping and all of that. Yep. Were, today That's was a, today Man, was a, I started getting nervous. I yeah. started <laughs> taking profit like a crazy person. Yeah, and I think we saw shorters get in the game yesterday because of how hard it ripped. Well, yep. today seems to be like a cover day. We didn't really have much buying come in, but after all the selling was over with it just stopped, you know, oil just stopped moving down and all those stocks stopped moving down. Yep, let me go to the next one. So the next one, um, just working our way up, was Ridge or Rig. It's a petroleum drilling type company as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe Dallas called this one now and it, it had a nice move. Um, has a little bit bigger float and it moves kind of slow. But when oil came out, it started moving like it had a low float. Yeah, so, that's that's everything that was an oil stock with yesterday. Yeah. Um, so you know sometimes float doesn't matter when you got a catalyst. IMPP was one that I traded as well. Uh, took profit off very small profit off this one because I st I started seeing hustle pop, so I just jumped out of this one green and just got, got my eyes on hustle. Yeah. Uh, today, but this one had a well no float to look at but we see this is not as good this one came from the bottom so you can see the difference held by insiders seven yeah. percent held by in the other one was 30 percent held by insiders that we looked at this one's <laughs> seven percent insiders and 24 percent uh institutions so insiders those insiders when they believe in something something's really got some value They'll be in deep on it, but seven percent compared to thirty percent on the other company, that's mm -hmm. a pretty big difference. Yeah. Yeah, and also keeping in mind the float. The float what's the float on IMPP? Oh, it's not oh, saying. Oh, saying um, yeah. let me see if I can find at least the shares outstanding real quick. Shares outstanding fourteen fourteen point three eight million. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I like that. I mean, that's the little float we want. Just like MARPS and INDO, those are the type yep. of plays we're looking for. So if that's the shares outstanding, the float's probably around eleven million would be my guess. Well, we know it's under fourteen million. Yeah, whatever the float is. Yeah, so it'll move. It'll move fast. The next one I saw W and T offshore. This one kind of got me interested. I saw it one day popping. He came onto one of my scanners and I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, no, no, no. The reason it popped is because earnings. It had earnings coming up. And um, I was looking at it, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. It has around that 92.58 million float, but it's another one of those drilling companies. So like I said, it just follows, it's just part of the oil sector. Yeah. Now, one thing about trading in uh, these hot sectors is if you know a sector is hot, go for the most, you know, the most volatile one. Go for those lower float ones. But if you're coming in late, you need to look for value in that sector, something that's going to hold up. Because it can shoot up like we saw uh, INDO shoot up to 75 bucks. And now it's, <laughs> it's yeah. trying to get back to 25. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing, too. Like, it ripped so hard that when oil had this pullback, of course it's going to drop as hard as it rips. You know, it's the same thing with any low flow. They're going to they're going to move very fast up and down. So you do got to be prepared for that. But you know, you just keep the CL up and that's all you got to do to really keep an eye as long as the CL is holding its trend line uh, or if it comes down to another support and starts to hold there, you know, then we can look for those support level buys because you definitely don't want to be looking at the top of these. I'm sure some people probably bought the tops of a lot of these plays yesterday thinking for swing trades, thinking that they were going to keep ripping. I mean, I was one of them who has been, I've been holding 
shares and stuff from my original trades after I locked out profit. And I didn't expect this big of a pullback on oil, but I didn't expect that big of a rip on oil either. 130 is, we got there pretty quick. My whole target now, for oil for the whole entire year was 150. <laughs> Yeah, that's what scared me is how quickly we got up there. Mm. I'm like, okay, if we shot up here like a rocket ship, it'd be a different thing. If we got in and it grinded up to 130 and just held around that level. But we, we, we definitely were on a carnival ride up to mm. uh, 130. And I was like, you know what? I believe only clowns will be holding at the top. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, you know. The same thing will apply to those low float stocks when they like I and Dale, like we were saying, when they rip hard like that, you're gonna have to expect some pullback. People are gonna lock in profits. Yep. And there's you know, there's only two two ways you, if you get a good low buy, the only way that you can lose on that low buy is if you don't take profit and you just get greedy and you're like, it'll go back up. You know, when you're up like five hundred bucks and you don't <laughs> take profit because you think it'll go up. And then you're sitting at negative twenty five dollars, and you're like, "It's go, it'll go back up." Yeah, you don't <laughs> want to get into the hope boat either. <laughs> don't don't get in the hope boat, and then run into a tidal wave of the stock market, and it just drowns you. And there's no there's no surviving that. So you know these are vol. I just want to say these are very volatile market times. So <laughs> if you're swinging whatever you're doing, if you're scalping, just be very aware and cognizant of how quick something like oil futures or the whole entire nasdaq can move you know the nasdaq moving five to ten dollars in a day is not normal that's heavy vol volatility so if it can shoot up ten dollars in a day it could drop back down five dollars in a day and we've seen those quick swings happen so just be re be prepared for quick swings no matter what it is even if it is like oil on an uptrend we see that clearly today a big big price swing yep next one is valco energy that i saw valco is another crude oil petroleum type deal a little bit lower lower uh float so as we go down in float we're seeing that this held by investors is going down and down and down as well that one's actually got a pretty heavy institutional hold though even though it's that low yeah. float that's not a good thing because if institutions have all the control and you you buy in there high, <laughs> you're gonna get you gonna get shot in the foot. That that is true. You know, if the if the institutions, it, it goes both ways. If the institutions have quite a bit of control over it, though, it's not gonna be as uh, predictable as a lot of plays because you then you gotta predict if those institutions like. For example, on Valco Energy, if those institutions at 41% decide that they don't want theirs anymore, well, if they drop 41% of the float, that's going to crash the stock. So, And at the same time, if they add to those positions, that can push the price up. But the, the institutional holdings is, is going to make it a little different than, like we said before, those, those uh, ones without as much insider stuff. So, um... I'm gonna go ahead and do some higher price ones as well. And out and like I said, I'm gonna put these watch lists on the Discord. So if you want to check them out, um, you can check them out in the Discord, and they'll I'll be there uh, later on tonight. I'll get them up there. Is it sign up free frameworkfortune.com to get free access to the Discord. Yes, yes. Uh, this is one that uh, Ben was talking about earlier. Marps, which uh, had a very uh, was this a nice little low float? Yeah, 1.61 oh, million. This is probably the lowest float of all the oil stocks. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally, it took a 1,000 shares to move it 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying, man. That's why when I called it out at the beginning of the week, I was like, this is the lowest float one. You know, it's only 2 million shares. One chat room could come in and push that up. One... One buyer on Wall Street could come in and push that up as a tiny float. Yeah, let's look at the uh, insiders holding there. Oh, quite a bit of insiders. Institutions, uh, I guess, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing with more insiders. I guess people with connections uh, to the actual company believe in it more than institutions. Well, but again, 
Well, here's the thing, though. There's only 2 million shares, so there's not that many shares. I mean, if an institution was to come in, they could buy the whole entire company. So it's not really oh, yeah. one of the... It's not really one of those ones that institutions are going to look at because they can't really get enough shares to make enough money. You know, if they put a billion dollars in there, that's the whole entire float. So then how are they going to sell it? So that's, I would say that's why there's not many institutions in there. Yeah, that was definitely a dangerous one. You you really had to um, be in the mindset of with, with a low low mover like that you have to just hold in almost diamond hands because you don't know which way it's gonna go it made big moves up and down <laughs> well that's the thing as long as the oil's holding up i'm not too worried about it it's like indo you know indo is probably the next lowest float and it was the first one to really get these these stocks in the oil sector to go uh but as it was pulling back after its initial rip, that's when we started seeing these other ones ripping and stuff. So as long as, as long as oil stays going up, uh, marps and those plays they may they may move around intraday quite a bit. But the overall trend line is going to uh, feed into the buyer side to the upside unless, like I said, oil starts cracking. Yeah. This was this was one that uh one I mean not one life uh DB made some money on BTU, BTU it was a little bit a little bit more expensive but when it got moving up it was strong moves up I'm talking about like you know three four five dollars of movement but uh mm -hmm. it took it took a little bit it took a little while but I mean if you can sit there for let's say an hour. Like like DB, uh, he said he pulled off twelve hundred on it. You sit there for an hour and make twelve hundred. I mean, <laughs> you making twelve hundred dollars an hour. You you can definitely afford two picks. Yeah, well, I mean, it, uh, uh, two though. Like how much capital? To yeah, I like three hundred shares. I think he does three hundred share positions, I believe. Three hundred shares. So that was like what sixty thousand in capital to make twelve hundred dollars though. Yeah, I mean That's it's a, a risk. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just saying, cause like, uh, we, if you would have spent the same amount, if you put that much shares into MARPS, and it ripped ten dollars, you would have made a whole lot more money for that same amount of capital, or, yeah. or Hussa or INDO. Yeah. But that's why. It's not his forte, man. Just no. not his forte. You know, some people don't. Some people don't have the stomach for the low floats. They ain't got this the, one, the, they ain't got the, the coins. The, <laughs> the float on this one was a hundred something, hundred hundred million. So it's not a super high float. No, that's actually surprising. That one. Look at yeah. the institutional hold though. Yeah, they own that's, the whole thing. <laughs> he wants to play with the big boys. <laughs> I'm all right. You can have, that, that, the, they got the whole thing, man. You, you definitely it's like zero insiders. <laughs> yeah, just all institutions. Yeah, man. I don't. I don't want to be. In, I, that's not what I want to be in. Something where all the inst, where the institutions have it all. Because then you're just you're on. You're like a little uh, boat out there. In a, you're you're a little rowboat out in the ocean, and all these sharks of institutions, these great white whales and great white sharks, are just circling you. <laughs> this is uh, some news for it. Uh, one hour ago, Peabody gets five hundred thirty-four million margin call. Oh my goodness, they're about to. Oh, and Goldman uh, that Look at that. Look at that. Goldman this, uh, Goldman Sachs though stepped in. To help them out, so we're going to see this. Banks are going to try to help out these oil companies. Why? Because oil, uh, you know, if 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 Goldman Sachs did not think oil was going to keep going, why would they come in and give Peabody a ten percent loan to save them real quick? Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, 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 don't worry. You know, you kind of screwed up on holding oil today, Peabody, because it sounds like it's uh, it sounds like that one may be some type of fund, a fund or a trust or something. Peabody, Peabody Energy Corporation. Yeah. Because, like, Marps is a trust. Marps is not let me, a stock. Let me see. It is, um, let me go to the profile. Um, well, maybe it, it says corporation, so, oh, it's thermal coal. This isn't actually an oil stock. This is a coal stock. Coal energy. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess I'll switch it over. Now, there was, there was some headlines on the SPY today 
that Europe is pretty much going to be on coal for the next few years because <laughs> they don't have any oil either, apparently. Yeah. So speaking of, I guess I can. Uh, that is another. That is another sector to watch, though, is the coal. So I, I see what DB was doing. He's looking. He's looking yeah, ahead bro. for the other sectors that could run. Which coal is one. Uranium is another one. Uranium is highly underinvested. Very, very underinvested. And the truth about the nuclear power plants at this moment, they are the best and cleanest energy that we actually have so if we put up some more nuclear nuclear power plants the ones we already got up need to start running they're going to have to start mining a lot more uranium the uranium supplies are pretty low i'll add that over here to coal and of course i've got a couple gold and silver stocks i think you've got a couple gold and silver stocks too because we've been seeing gold and silver test these these resistance levels, but showing pretty good strength in the gold and silver stocks, that whole sector, because gold and silver prices have been higher, they're able to charge more. A lot of those stocks are in good position for a market uh, crash. They're, you know, they're drilling, they're pulling out gold and silver where they can, but yeah, those companies yeah. are in pretty, pretty good positioning yeah i'm just building building my portfolios you know for each one of these i got one for coal nuclear natural gas food any kind of you know like mm -hmm. food stocks i want to watch solar metals just now these are just random ones like if i don't have time to look through them at the moment i just throw them in interesting stocks and then then put them where they need to go aviation batteries emission ev crude oil now, that's the I thing, too. Lose. If With oil possibly staying higher prices, we should see a lot of EV uh, stocks start getting attention. And we're already starting to see that. Would you, I think you got NIO on your watch list. Yeah, and I'm already in blink charging. And you're in blink charging, yeah. So that's another, uh, you know, that renewable energy. I mean, the whole energy sector is moving. So all energy, the natural gas, all of that, those stocks can be getting moves. But EV stands to, especially EV companies, stand to make a lot of money right now. If gas stays high or if it goes even higher to where it's like $8 a gallon, people are going to be trading in their cars for electric cars. Now, to make EV cars, it takes a lot of silver. So we can see silver and EV and... Uh, oil all be running together gold is a is you know with the inflation gold's getting plenty of attention so it's not as used quite as much in the ev as silver is yeah well yeah man i'm just just getting started on these watch lists it just i never i never have seen a platform do watch list like this they make it so easy it is easy <laughs> you know at first i was trying to do watch lists on td and i was like getting stuff lost in watch lists and stuff like that but oh, with yeah. this and you know each portfolio is so valuable mm -hmm. and you seem you guys have seen my tons of different watch lists with different names i pull them out all the time just on street another day they're talking about shippers i was like i got a watch list for an old watch list somewhere for shipper stocks this thing for two days i got this all these watch lists one two or these are portfolios or whatever but mm -hmm. i guess you can call them watch lists as well yeah it might as well just be watch lists so yeah you got blink on there idx um but uh yeah speaking of scanners this uh yahoo finance screener is leaps and bounds better than uh finviz i use finviz oh, yeah. when i when i first started i used finviz religiously and then um, I transitioned to um, uh, Yahoo Finance, but I didn't really get into Yahoo fan Finance like this. And man, when I tell you, you can get so detailed in Yahoo Finance. Uh, I just, I, I just didn't know what to do with myself. You know, I just. It <laughs> well, was that's hard. the thing too, for new traders. You you see, if you if you come in, maybe you've been following us for a little bit, you'll see that we switch brokers, we switch you know charting platforms, portfolio platforms, 
that's just the life of a trader. You're going to be switching platforms and all that all the time. When, when, when one platform is not running good, you know, if that consistently happens, you're going to you're going to have to switch or you're just going to lose money. So, it's just a part of the it's just a part of the life. I know you get set up on one platform as a new trader and you're like, "Yeah, this is great." And then you might and then like 2 days later, you might find a new platform. And that's the thing, too, there's lots of platforms coming out. I'm I'm looking for one on blockchain, but it's not anything out like that yet. Or at least I'm not aware of it. If you guys have one, put it down in the comments. Go down right. the list real quick. The one that it just pulled up? Yeah, the EV one. Yeah, it just pulled up a bunch of uh, most active stocks. I thought this was oh. EV is just most active. But some of the ones we've already talked about, the, the energy stocks is basically what's here. Yeah, because well, Vail, Vail is a gold stock. It's on that list. Go go down. Let me see if there's any other gold stocks. Vail being on that list is a good indicator that we're going to start seeing more interest in these. Gold right there. Yeah, Barrett Gold, another one. Yeah, so two gold stocks in the most actives on Yahoo Finance right now. See how many, uh, oh, it's 325, so it should be some more down here. There's where we just left off. <laughs> I was looking at Bumble to trade Bumble on a dip. It just needs to come down. Yeah, uh, anything other than the sectors that are moving up right now, I'm pretty, there's your Mana Gold, A-Y, A-U-Y, down a little bit. Yeah. Your Mana, that's $5. Ken Ross Gold. Yep, Ken Ross Gold. So we're seeing multiple gold stocks starting to pop up in. And this is the volume over here on the day. So it got 20 million shares traded today. Yep. Yeah, let's go to Gainers. And let's Silvergate, see. SI, that's a silver company. So that was up 18% today. Uh, okay. Mara's Mara. up a little bit. That's a crypto stock. Yeah, cryptos, you said were uh, up a little bit right today. Yeah, Bitcoin's back over 40,000. <laughs> Ethereum's. Holding above 2,500. Adam pushed up uh, over 30. Uh, God's on chain rebounding. A lot of rebounds in the crypto market. There's Block again. I traded that one. It's way down from where I hit. I got it. Glad I'm not still holding it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of car oh. stocks too. Used car stocks that are, are up today. I'm noticing on that list. There's Coinbase up 10%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, crypto's rebounded. You know, crypto's went on a big run with the spy, and they and they pulled back. So with money coming out of the market, this is what I was saying yesterday too. I think in the stream, uh, all this oil money that retail traders have made with cryptos being at them low prices. You know, I, I don't know. It's good, good time, good time to be looking at them as they're trying to hold but we'll see bitcoin's held pretty strong through all this volatility like well like why oil's gotten all this attention bitcoin's just been hanging out chipotle chipotle is a thousand bucks what yeah man chipotle got a low float chipotle got a super low float man i know about chipotle man it's good, good stuff <laughs> believe that that, that thing is crazy I, that's why i've never seen it <laughs> mm-hmm I was like, man, I wanted this Chipotle have a have a ticker. It's got a ticker and it's still ticking. A lot of the market is just kind of you sent a lot of random stocks up because the market did rebound. The spy had a little rebound day to day. But the main thing that we're seeing is is the oil and energy with a with a sprick, a little you know, a little sprinkle of gold and silver starting to pop in those top gainers. And Vale's been on the top gainers for a couple of days now. These are the trending tickers. Things that are trending. Let's go to a lower market cap though. Uh I saw this one uh today. It was it was up quite a bit. Now it's back down to two forty nine, but it was up at like four to five bucks oh, earlier yeah. today. As you can see, still up a hundred holding hundred and seven percent. So that thing's they, these two I did not want to touch today with oil being out. Yeah. And then uh, it, I don't know what this is. SNTG Revelation. Yeah, a lot of stuff that this this is what Wall Street bets attacks things that don't make sense like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense. Oil is out and it's going haywire, and you want to come over here and, <laughs> and trade some random biopharmaceutical company? Like, yeah, what? That was probably yeah. It's probably pretty low flow in some chat room. Pushed it up or something. Yeah. 
be my guess. Yeah, about the same. Oh, look at there. Yeah, you can see Bitcoin right there is popping up on your... Yahoo Finance has cryptos as well. Like, they, uh, you can find anything on, that's on CoinGecko, any of the altcoins, they're all on Yahoo Finance. Yep. And that's one of the reasons why I'm probably going to switch over is because it has everything. Futures, cryptos, stocks, all of it. All in one spot to keep a eye on everything. Yep. Don't the uh, the only other stocks right now for gold that I would keep an eye on is DRD and what was that one I found last night? Now this this one is not a mining company, but they fund and make deals with mining companies, so they get royalty payments from the miner the mining companies they work with. So, of course, if the prices are going up, their royalty payments are going to get bigger, but that is NSR, Nomad Royalty Company. Um, Only that DRD that you just called out, DRD Gold Limited, a gold mining company engages in the surface gold tellings mm -hmm. uh, retreatment business in South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, the company is involved in the exploration, extraction, processing, and smelting activities. It recovers gold from surface tellings in the wit wit water. Oh my gosh, what is that word? <laughs> okay, let's just say W D. We'll take the first letter, letter and the last letter. <laughs> <laughs> w B and G P. G G's, bro. Yeah, G G's. Uh, uh, the company was incorporated in 1895 mm -hmm. is headquartered in johannesburg south africa so yeah yeah they pay a very nice dividend as well they are undervalued pull up that chart well you can pull the statistics there dividend. Uh, look, look at the there. look at the profit margin this is the important part 20 percent positive profit margins this is what a lot of these gold and silver companies are going to look like 40 million in float so you don't got two you don't have any insiders you don't have a lot of institutions, not a lot of. Sh there's not a lot of short on it. Look at the total cash, two point two billion dollars, and this is a ten dollar stock right now. And they pay out uh, two point five three percent annual dividend. That's kind of look at the lever free cash flow, five hundred million in lever free cash flow. So they got the free cash flow. You know they got a big, big old chunk of cash, and they're just pulling that money out of the ground. And it's go if gold goes up, they're just gonna make more money, you know. So that's that's my number one gold watch when gold really starts going. Oh, it they says, reduced its uh, dividend. What did they reduce yeah. its dividend for? I don't know. It says uh, they reduced it to ten cents. I don't know where it was at first. Oh, it's still it's still a three point four percent dividend. <laughs> year it's well covered by earnings yeah so they cut the dividend a little bit but still it's a nice dividend okay. but yeah you keep an eye on drd and then nsr this is the nomad royalty company sr let's go to the profile first see what's up with it uh nomad royalty company operates as a gold and silver royalty company that produces rights to the gold or silver produced from a mine it owns a portfolio of 10 royalty stream and gold loan assets. The yes, company sir. is based in Canada, Montreal, Canada. Yes, sir. They don't, they don't have any costs. They don't do the drilling. They don't do none of the stuff the miners do, but get, you know, they, they kind of like middleman almost to sell the, the rights of gold properties and things like that to companies. But more or less, it's kind of like leasing in a way they just you know they just gonna make money there's you can see that you can see the revenue 27 million a um, lot of institutions holding it and insiders but floats 15 million super low float total cash they got 12 million there uh, they a little bit under the, on the cash flow but barely you know so this stock has been running around seven dollars for a while not getting a, a ton of attention at all but if gold starts going i definitely think that's one to keep on watch as they don't have all the mining profits or all the mining costs you know their operating cost was what 12 million so yeah. with that low of operating cost and they got what 24 million it said in prop and profit or in cash 
you know they're pretty good and they pay out a dividend too as well oh, I think they do yeah right there dividend day April 14th 2022 so another that's the thing with the gold and silver stocks a lot of those have dividends that's that's all of my watch list uh did you uh have any specifics uh that you didn't see on those watch lists that you would like to bring up or what um there's gonna be some more gold and silver stocks i'll be talking about of course there's first majestic silver and plenty of different ones that i'm very familiar with i'm not as familiar with oil stocks but gold and silver stocks that we're talking we're talking my language now so <laughs> but uh, yeah there's ag right there speaking of first majestic silver right there Thanks. on the right oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so ag around 12 dollars right now usau let me click on metals and see yeah, what there it you go up. wheaton precious metals if you like a higher price stock is a solid solid company they've been around for a long time and their their numbers, yeah, you can see they're actually they got earnings coming up. It looked like yeah, I what saw them. Uh, they they might have already. I don't know if they happen today and aftermarket or tomorrow and aftermarket. It's one of those. This is another nice thing that's easy to get to with Yahoo Finance. Look at the profit margin, fifty one percent profit margin. Look at those numbers. Now I see it's a little higher float, four hundred and fifty, but that's a little higher price. But this is a solid, it's solid. Out a dividend. This is going to be something that people are going to hold anyway. Mm -hmm. we, that's so what I'm saying. We, ground, this isn't a day trading one <laughs> unless you want to get chopped up. Um, no, I, wouldn't even, I don't think he, he would really probably get chopped up too much on it because it's always going to be having volume on it. Keep going down and look at that cash flow statement. You know, Look at the lever three cash flow. 400 million in levered, levered free cash flows. So they got, you know, they're they're positive and they're paying out dividends. You know, the more positive they go, the bigger those dividends will get too. Like as they go up in price and the company's making more money, they're going to pay out more to their shareholders. So that's, that's Wheaton, Wheaton's, a, like I said, a big one, but a solid one. About uranium the other day as well. Yeah, UEC. And, of course, you see Barrett Gold's up there. But uh, Bell is one that we saw earlier. Nine hours ago, Bell is poised to benefit as nickel prices surge. Yeah, because Bell, had, Bell mines gold, silver, and also gets nickel and copper from their mines. They just um, mainly focus on gold and silver, but with nickel and copper and those metals skyrocketing because of inflation and all this other stuff, they're uh, making money. You know, they're making extra money off of that that they usually don't make that much money on. We'll, we'll be covering these, you know, all week in the live streams, keeping an eye on which sectors are running. With the market volatility, I think that's probably the best idea is to just stick with the hot sectors until they give up and we see new hot sectors. Because, I mean, you could you could probably trade those random ones like Hal was pointing out today that didn't really have anything to do with anything. But those are going to be more short intraday plays. And they'll be Whereas, more manipulated too. They yeah, have some crazy wicks. Yeah, exactly. So... These gold and silver and oil and EV, all of these we're going to look for the next two, three months to continue uptrending because I don't think anything's going to change that quickly. So we'll be able to catch them on day trades, swing trades, all type of stuff. If you haven't yet, go check out h, &H Traders channel. Subscribe. He does the live stream trading every morning as well. And him a little bit earlier. So if you like that pre-market analysis, you definitely want to hit up HH's channel. Because I'm never live streaming during pre-market. Sorry, guys. Appreciate everybody joining us as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time. This is war with the enemy. Think that it was meant to be. Living in a time where disease is on every screen. I won't let them fester me. I know most are festering. Negativity is a plague for the mentally weak.